hi. <laughs> so it's been a while. I believe this is the first video I've put up in over a year. A lot's changed in like the last year since I was posting. Um, obviously I got a haircut. Obviously I changed the color. But yeah, I thought it might be kind of fun to do like a a get ready with me kind of life update kind of situation that's been going on. Um, yeah, I'm going to be doing a, a full face of makeup, which I haven't done probably since before COVID, <laughs> to be completely honest. Or at least not since quarantine. I think I did a couple full faces during uh, quarantine when I was stuck at home and I just had a lot of time to play around with makeup while doing online classes. But I guess we'll get started. I used to have a whole rhythm with how I would do like my eyes and then my face. I was not, I think I was like a, I never really was an eyes, a fa not an eyes, a face first kind of person. I always did my eyes first because I always do like colors and, and stuff. But I would like, I would do my eyes, I'd get like halfway through and then I'd do my face and then I'd finish my eyes and then I'd finish my face. I guess I'll do some of my face first. We'll start with the face, we'll go from there. Uh, while I try to find my rhythm. Where is my brush? Right in front of my face, like it always is. I'm gonna start with the NYX Total Control Drop Foundation. I am in the shade Light. So, like I said, a lot's changed. I got my esthetician's license um, back in 2020. For those of you who are new here, hi! My name's Piper. I am a licensed esthetician based in North Texas. It's been so long since I've used foundation, I forgot how... Like, this is a light to medium coverage foundation. It's very buildable and I do really like it, but I forgot how my face looked with foundation versus without. It's, it's, it's weird. I've gotten so used to seeing my bare naked face. Anyway. Oh man, I have another zit coming in. Great. Hormones, man. They'll really, they'll really screw you over. Yeah, I did the esthetician program at my local, at a local beauty school. There's a couple around me. Um, I could honestly do a whole other video on my experience at beauty school and um, whether I think the school itself was worth it. Obviously getting my license and everything was worth all the BS I put up with at that school. But I've got a couple bones to pick with that school. Just a couple though. Though I will say this, I don't regret the relationships I made at that school. I mean, I met my best friend at beauty school. So I definitely do not regret that. There were some things that did happen in school though that I think were a load of crap. I do not think it was worth the price of going to beauty school, like the, the monetary cost. But again, that's... I could make... if you guys are interested, I could make that into a whole separate video. But anyway, so I started beauty school in November of 2019. I think I actually started Thanksgiving week, and I was part of a class of six. I'm going to contour my face now with um, some cream contouring, and I'm going to use the NYX Wonder Stick in light medium. And then, of course, I'm sure you guys hear the, the year 2019 and you think, oh shit. Yeah, so I was in beauty school when COVID hit. And, honestly, I did not mind being stuck at home. I've always been very much a homebody and an introvert, and I've never been like a social butterfly or anything. In fact, I was probably the exact opposite of a social butterfly. So, I, I think that probably also has a lot to do, not probably, it definitely has a lot to do with the fact that I was also homeschooled from kindergarten all the way through senior year. And I chose to not try to go out and make friends. Um, 
because I just didn't want to. I liked my life at home. I liked being able to have my own schedule with schoolwork and everything. So I know that has a lot to do with that. And for all the bones that I have to pick with that school, I will say that my instructors online, given the situation, given the circumstances, um, they honestly did the best that they could and it showed. And I did, I did, and I still do appreciate everything that they did for us while we were online. I know not everyone, not all the, I don't, I can't speak for the cosmetologists because I didn't do cosmetology, but I know for a fact that not everyone in, um, the SD, the SD course did. So I took a, I was originally supposed to graduate in May of 2020. My whole class was. One of my classmates graduated online at the beginning of May 2020. I took a leave of absence from school. I was going to wait until uh, we were able to open back up so I could try to get some more hands-on experience because the beauty industry is such a hands-on field. I know even TDLR, the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, they had to change their requirements for licenses because at the time there were only so many hours that you could get online and then you had a certain number of hours that you had to get with hands-on stuff. Um, and I don't know how it is for other states but in, or even other countries, but in Texas, in the US, um, it's 750 hours to get your SC license. So I decided to take that leave of absence and wait it out and see where that would get me. And then one of my classmates graduated online, and I was part of a class of six. So when I say one of my classmates, I mean one of my classmates in my group. And she was the only one of us to graduate online, because a week later is when we reopened. <laughs> and I always did feel kind of bad about that, but what can you do, right? So when we reopened in June of 2020, I went back, and a month later, um, I graduated. Um, at the end of June of 2020, and then because um, of how backed up all the state board sites were, as well as some personal family issues that was going, I went through that summer. Um, I didn't get to take my state boards until. August and September of 2020. So I took my written exam in August 2020 and I took my practical exam in September of 2020. And by October, first of all, let me tell you how terrifying it is to take your state boards. I was especially scared of the written because I, with the practical, when you're in school and like your last like couple weeks, your instructors go over the exam with you. And they tell you, who, um, for the practical anyway, exactly what to do, and how to do it, and when to do it, and what not to do, and how not to do it. Um, and my instructor uh, let us all take video. I don't know if they all do that. I would assume they would, otherwise how would you practice once you graduate? But man, I cannot tell you how many times I watched that video she let us take. But I was really more scared for the written, because, first of all, I do have test anxiety, and I've always, always hated tests. And the thing about state boards is, if you if you fail, you have to pay for every time you t you take you re you retake the test. And of course, they never tell you which questions you got wrong. It's and it's all randomly generated too. But luckily, I passed them both on the first try. Um, and by October of 2020, I, I had my license. And then I applied to about 10 different, um, spas and lash extension places, um, in my area. And only one of them responded to me which I've always thought was very interesting and also frustrating about job searching. All these places are saying that they're hiring, but then you apply and you never hear back from them. And that's a load of shit. 
Now I'm going to take my NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Concealer in Fair and I'm going to try to brighten my under eyes just a tad. I'm only going to use a little bit of this at a time because this concealer is full coverage and my foundation is definitely not full coverage. Um, so I'm going to try and see if, like how much I can build this up. That might have been too much. I don't know. And now I'm going to uh, set my face with the NYX HD Finishing Powder in Translucent. But the place um, I ended up hearing back from was a lash place and I was interviewed and I got I was lucky enough to be um, hired on the spot so I started at that place I started training at that place in like November 1st and then by the time Thanksgiving rolled around I was out on the floor taking clients and I've been there ever since I've been there for over a year now, which is crazy to think about, and of course eventually I do want to move on and get some like facial experience because I've never had that experience outside of um, school, I've never been able to work in a spa environment, a spa setting yet, so eventually um, I'll leave the place, but as of right now, I don't really have any intentions of that right now. Right now the environment um, at my job is actually pretty good. My manager has done a great job of tr cultivating a healthy work environment, as healthy as it can be. Um, working with a bunch of, you know, 20 somethings and teenagers, um, teenagers working the front. Um, and of course, it all being women. Because unfortunately, the stereotype is true that working with women can be something else. <laughs> I think it is now time to move on to my eyes. Yeah. My palette just like slid. Almost. Oh my god. I just actually dug my nail into one of my eyeshadows in this palette. I'm gonna put that down. And now my pants are covered in blue, light blue eyeshadow. That's that's great. I'm gonna start filling in my brows with the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in Ash Brown. So that's where I was, and where I'm at now. I hope if I actually cranked out some of the pencil. But let me tell you, it's been... I think I've tried to rebrand this particular page um, quite a few times over the last, like, two years. Because first, it was a makeup page. And then I started beauty school, and it became a makeup and aesthetics page and then I got into lashing and it became a, a an aesthetics and a lashes page um, and I dropped makeup off of it because honestly I started aesthetics because in at least in Texas there's no licensing requirements to be a makeup artist And my mom actually really pushed me to do aesthetics so that way I would have a, a steady job, a steady income, and let's be real here, a good base for makeup is um, good skincare. So that's the main reason why I did it. And then when I got to the, the makeup section of my course, the makeup classes, and we were supposed to do like makeup on each other, I realized that I actually, I don't like doing makeup on other people. Like I'll do it if you ask me, but I just, I really don't particularly enjoy it. I enjoy like teaching people about makeup. I really, I don't think makeup has really any rules unless there's rule you create the rules when it comes to your own makeup. Yeah, people can tell you, oh, do your brows this way, do your foundation this way, do your eyes this way. If you want to look like this, if you want your face to look like this, paint it this way. If you want your face to not look like that, paint it that way. But when it really when it comes to makeup, it's all based around preference and trends and stuff. Like I can guarantee you, like for example, back in like 2017, 2018 the thing for brows was those big, bold, 
block, not block brows, but they were very much sketched on. You needed, everyone told you if you want to get these brows, to do your brows this day and age, you need pencils, pomades, gels, pens, um, and then there was the whole soap brow thing, which I, I don't know if that's still a thing, honestly, or if it's as big of a thing. And now, the trend nowadays is more natural brows, fluffy brows, and that's really where the soap brows come in. And also back then it was like, cut creases were such a huge thing. I remember even if you scroll, you don't even have to scroll back on my Instagram page because there's posts that are like right at the top from like two years ago. But like, I used to do cut crease that every time I did a makeup look it would be like a half cut crease, or a full cut crease, or a cut crease and and like flowers that I would paint on my eyes and this and that and it was bold and eye-catching and these days oh and let's not forget the full all the, the rage of full coverage let's not forget about that and nowadays it's like people don't really want that anymore that's not the big thing it's people want more natural more subtle especially um, with the pandemic and people being at home so much more often and not being able to go out like we used to. People want their makeup to reflect their current lifestyle. And I also just think that when we were in quarantine and people stopped caking their face in makeup like they would, like they did to like go to work or go out. Um, and we got used to seeing our natural skin, our own faces, in the mirror. That we just, and then we tried to put on like our full coverage uh, foundation with full coverage concealer and those, this much contouring, this much blush, this much highlight, and the big bold brows and the big thick liners. We were like, it's too much. We can feel the cake on our face. And if you still like to do your makeup that way, that is fine. I am not saying that you shouldn't. You do your makeup however you want to do it because it's your, it's your choice, it's your preference, and makeup is all built around preference. That's how these trends start. Everyone wants to look a certain way. And then, now you've got this trend specifically on like TikTok and Instagram Reels, where these people are, and again, if you want to do your makeup this way, you're free to do your makeup this way, but they're, they'll put, they're putting on like this huge pump of foam primer and then like that foam foundation, three layers of foundation, they're like using their hands and globbing it like onto their faces and then they do this big dramatic reveal and it's all like perfectly applied makeup and perfectly smooth skin. First of all, that ain't real. <laughs> there, I can't tell you how many filters have got to be on there. Not to mention lights like the one I'm using now. I've got a ring light, it's not natural lighting, it's probably making my face look amazing. But let me see, let me show you if I turn down my light. I just knocked everything over. Hi. This is what my face actually looks like in normal lighting with just the light from my ceiling fan on. Not with my ring light blasting you with the light of a thousand suns. I say blasting you, it's more like blasting me with the light of a thousand suns because every time I have to look at my camera I'm looking pretty much directly into the lights which is probably damaging my eyes to a certain extent but we won't talk about that. Now what did I knock? Oh, I knocked over everything with my hoodie just now. I actually don't think it was as bright as it was before, but actually, no, I do need it brighter so I can see. I was gonna say I don't, and I just knocked over everything again. But again, when it comes down to it, it's it's your preference, it's the trends, right? And of course, if you're in like the makeup industry, then or the beauty industry, you follow the trends because that's what's gonna get you the most clicks, the most likes, the most interaction with your content. That's what's gonna help build your brand or keep expanding your brand and get you, you know, get you the money. <laughs> I'm now priming my eyes with the Urban Decay Original po Primer Potion. Um, I think they've got a couple out. I honestly don't know what the difference is because I just picked this up from like the little shelf at Sephora by the checkout where it's got like the little mini versions of everything. And again, do your makeup however you want to do your makeup. If people want to judge your makeup for that, then that is their problem, not yours. If you like doing your makeup a certain way, um, then do your makeup that way. At the end of the day, it truly doesn't matter. If I feel like if the last two years have taught us anything, it's that who gives a damn? what other people think. It truly 
does not matter. Now I'm going to go into my Michaela J Glam Light collaboration palette and on a big-ish fluffy brush I'm gonna pick up, what's that called? Harley. It's just like a light taupey brownish color. I'm only picking up a little bit of it on my brush. I'm just gonna dust this all over my entire eye. It kind of helps set that primer a little bit and help prevent creasing, but not too much. Anyway, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. Back to the original conversation. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up, um, what's that called? Rhodey. It's like a nice light blue. Kind of matches my hair a little bit. I think my hair's a little bit, yeah, my hair's a little bit darker than this. Um, but I'm gonna try to build a wing shape. I'm also, I'm gonna pick it up on a regular blending brush. I'm also gonna pick it up on a little angled, slightly fluffy brush to try and help create that that winged angle shape because that's the vibe I want to go for today. But I'm hoping this, I'm hoping I finally figured out what I want to do with this page um, or what I want to post at this point. I'm hoping this is going to be the rebranding that's going to stick this time because I can't tell you how many different times I've done this, how many different rebrands I have tried to do and they've just never really worked out in the way I wanted it to. But I think I have discovered, at least at this point in my life, at this point in my career, that when it comes to makeup, I just want to do it pretty much on myself. I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it out loud. I want to do, when it comes to makeup, I want to create things and I want to share those things. Um, so I am going to post it, but I don't, I didn't post it before because I didn't want people to get the impression that I was going, the, uh, that I do makeup on other people. Yes, I do makeup, but I don't want to do it on other people. And that is okay. I've kind of been trying to spend this last year, last two years really, figure, but really, really this year, this last year, 2021, trying to figure myself out, like who, you know, I'm 21 years old, I'm still trying to figure out who I am, <laughs> um, who I am as a person, who I am as an art, a makeup artist, an esthetician, a lash artist, I'm trying to figure out all of this and I had this concept in my mind that I, c I should only start posting this stuff like posting it on like my business pro my business profile when I finally had it all figured out but it took me everyone always says that you know no one really has their shit figured out and on a certain level I did always know that. But now I actually get it. So I'm going to stop, I'm going to try to stop wait, to take this, take this year, take this moment to stop waiting for the right, mo the right moment. Because there really is no right moment until, like you know, you feel it when it's right. And I know I sound very cheesy, but come to realize that they're right about that. You don't know it until you just, you suddenly do. <clears throat> I'm also going to use my ColourPop Blue Moon palette and I'm going to take the shade Fine China and I'm going to use that to like deepen and brighten my crease up a bit further. And if I end up changing my mind a little bit along the way, so be it. If I end up discarding certain things, that's fine. As long as... I say it to people all the time, whatever boosts the serotonin. Because you really just never know what the hell is going to happen next. So I'm going to post whatever beauty related thing I want to post. That's why I've changed the name of the channel, the name of my... and the name of all of the social media accounts linked 
to this part of my life to just my name because I don't want to be limited um, to just one aspect. I don't want to be limited to just makeup. I don't want to be limited to just lashes. I don't want to be limited to just aesthetics, just facials. Um, I want to do whatever it is I feel like doing in the beauty industry at any point in time. And that could change at any given moment. So I'm going to make it just my name. Because I feel like that gives me more freedom in that regard. And now I want to tell you guys a bit more um, about me as a person. So, like I said, I'm 21 years old, still trying to figure out who I am, but these are things that um, have stuck with me this far. I am a huge nerd. <laughs> I, uh, I love Marvel and The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, and Castlevania, and um, all things fantasy. I love Nightmare Before Christmas. I love Corpse Bride. I love Disney movies. I love the Disney Princess movies. I love the originals, the TV show. What else? I love Star Wars. I love Pride and Prejudice. I love Hocus Pocus. And while those things are not necessarily related to, um, you know, this channel or the beauty industry, I do want you guys to know parts of who I am outside of um, makeup and everything. Because I feel like it's important to remember, especially in this day and age of, like, parasocial relationships and the lines being blurred especially in the beauty community because lord knows there's so much drama with like people like James Charles and Jeffree Star and all of them that a lot of times the reason that a lot of us do this stuff the makeup gets lost behind that or sometimes people forget that we are also people we are also human beings I just have to try to try to remember that. Try to remember that you know I'm a human being with my own interests, like outside of beauty and stuff. And you know beauty is going to be the main focus, but there's other stuff as well. Like if you guys want to see like a, uh, I might do this series where I take. I think I started trying to do this series. I think I did it with um, the Disney Descendants characters, where I took each character and like their color scheme and everything. And I did a makeup look inspired by them. And I think I also did it for Captain Marvel. Um, but I would love to go back and... I think I also did it for Hela, too, um, from Marvel. But I would love to go back and, like, kind of start that series over. I want to do, like, series of makeup looks inspired by certain characters and stuff. I feel like that's a real... Things like that are really cool ways to incorporate makeup and your love for something else. I also en heavily enjoy um, true crime. Like I'm a huge fan of Bailey Sarian and her videos um, like combining makeup and something that she and thousands of other people enjoy which is true crime. And I actually want to do um, a series very heavily inspired by her murder mystery and makeup series. In fact <laughs> this is coming out before, but I actually already filmed a video um, inspired by that series. I did the research over Christmas for that video, and now I'm doing currently doing the research for the second video. The only difference is, to try to make it a bit different than Bailey's, is it's not just going to be, you know, criminals. It's going to be about, like people like Betty White and Prince and David Bowie and all of those because I thought that would just be a really I, ha I personally at this point in time um, have not seen anybody else do something like that does that mean I'm the first person to come up to come up with that idea of course not but I'm going to do it in my own way and that's what makes it different I would also love to know you know what kinds of other videos you guys would um, like to see from me, uh, whether it's makeup or if you guys want me to talk more about like skincare or something or maybe do more lifestyle kind of stuff or fashion or like clothes or jewelry or 
or whatever it is, I want to know what you guys want to see from me. I'm going to go into my Milani Gilded Noir palette and I'm going to pick up Gasp. It's this really, really pretty blue. I remember I, this is one of the palettes I would take with me to school for makeup classes and a lot of people liked this palette. A lot of my uh, classmates like this palette in both in my class and then the class above mine. I am. Uh, another thing that's happened in my life since we last spoke is I started Invisalign, which I'm sure you guys have been able to tell. I'm sure you guys have seen like the prop. There's probably a weird reflection off the plastic of my liners, but you've probably also seen the pink and orange rubber bands in my mouth. <laughs> um, I started Invisalign, I think about end of May, beginning of June 2021. Um, because I was finally able to go to a dentist for the first time in over a year. Um, I, I honestly, before that visit, I think the last time I saw a dentist was the last time I saw my pediatric dentist in 29, when I was still in beauty school, before COVID. And I'm very salty. I wish I would have been able to continue seeing that pediatric dentist because they were the type of office that would let you keep going until you were 21 so long as you didn't have any issues but then they found cavities so I had to go find a different dentist and I wasn't able to go until um right after the big freeze in Texas actually um which scarily enough we're about to have another another cold snap come through um when I'm filming this it is January 30th 2022 and this coming, um, it's been almost a year since the big freeze of 2021. And when I'm filming this, it's a Sunday. And this coming Wednesday, a big cold snap has come, is supposed to come through overnight. There's supposed to be like freezing rain and stuff. So we're kind of preparing for the power to go out again because I don't trust ERCOT as far as I can throw them. And I can't throw very far at all. I have like no physical strength in my body. I can barely pick up my nine pound dog. <laughs> That's a joke, I can pick him up with ease. He's a, he's, he's, he's a nine pound dog. Well, it, is, it is very scary because during the big freeze, you know, we had there was no power, there was no heat. People died. So it is, it's a little scary facing the very real possibility again. Now that being said, I do personally believe in the powers of like manifestation and um, good in, instead of putting good, in, good thoughts and good vibes out into the world and you'll get them back, whatever. I believe that whatever energy, whatever thought um, or intent you put out into the world, you're going to get it back towards you at some point in time. Like, kind of like good karma, bad karma kind of thing. If, you know, if you do good, good karma is going to come back and reward you. If you, if you do bad, bad karma is going to come back and bite you. So I'm trying to think positive, which is actually really hard because I've always been more of a negative person or negative leaning person. More of a pessimist <coughs> leaning person. But... I'm trying. I think I'm also going to pick up that eyeshadow on my finger too and just see oh, if I can get more payoff, which I kind of did. I think the brush works just as well. I just really, I really hope the camera's picking up how lovely that is. And I'm really happy with this blend too. I really like how it looks with my hair. Because I, I did, I actually did just dye it this morning. I think you'll see it in the um, the first of that like true crime ma and makeup video, but I was purple before, and I think my hair was also just slightly longer than this. Okay, I'm gonna take a step back from my eyes for a second, and I'm gonna do some more contouring on my face with powder contouring. Um, this is the NYX um, Highlight and Contour Pro Palette. It's got, let me put my glasses on for this actually, because I don't know, I always do this, but I can never actually read. 
um, what it says. So it's got um, eight shades in here and they, there's a, a, a shimmery highlight shade called Ice Queen. That's this, this top right one. Um, and then next to that is Soft, Soft Lash. Let me open it up a little bit so it's not so glaring. So we've got Ice Queen here. This one is Soft Light. And then this guy is Cream. He's more of like a a yellow, more like, almost looks like more of a banana powder kind of vibe, but okay. And then the one next to that, on the opposite end of Ice Queen, is Nectar. Yeah, Nectar. The one below that is Tan, and then we have Toffee next to that. Sculpt next to that, and then Hollow next to that. So we've got um, a couple different shades. I don't know if this comes in like different, uh, if there's multiple palettes containing multiple, um, depths of color and stuff. We've definitely got some cool tones and some warm tones. I'm not sure how well, like, the warmed, the, the, the contour shades work for deeper skin tones. Um, I know, and I, I do not think that these highlight shades are meant for deeper skin tones at all. Maybe Ice Queen would show up on some deeper skin, or dark, some more medium skin tones. But as for deeper ones, I really hope, that, I mean I've had, I got this from Beauty School, so it's been two years that I've had this, but I really hope that NYX has some more shades, a bigger shade range than this otherwise, because they're a drugstore. They're a, they're a drugstore brand, they can do better. Wait, can you change them out? Oh, I forgot with the Pro palettes, you can like change out the colors and stuff. Ow! That does not come out easy. Okay, probably because this is what came with it. But yeah, you can change out like the pans of uh, powders and stuff. What are you called? Were you called Sculpt? Is that what you were? There's no way I use Toffee. No, this, ha this has to be Sculpt. I'm going to use Sculpt. I might go in with a little bit of soft light. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to use Sculpt from the contour side and soft light from the highlight side, maybe. It's a big maybe on the highlight, but that's definitely the contour shade I'm going to use. What was I talking? I don't even remember what I was talking about now before I brought that out. Oh, the big freeze. <laughs> but yeah, at the, as of this point in time, no one knows what's going to happen. Um, but we're going to hope for the best and hope we don't lose power and freeze our asses off again. But we've been preparing. Um, we got a new we got a new gas tank. We got an extra gas tank. We got uh, one of those. My dad couldn't find his own campfire stove, uh, camping stove, in storage. So... We went to Walmart and got one just in case. My dad is also an avid collector of um, MREs. Those like, I know they stand for something. I can never remember what they stand for, but they're like the, the ration, like military rations that you can like either heat up or you don't heat up. We have, he usually puts them in storage, but we had some laying out last year during the freeze that he hadn't had a chance to go and put away yet, so we ended up like just using those, um, and those came in really handy when we didn't have any, you know, any power or any way to heat up actual, any other food. I'm not highlighting with this palette. And I also don't use blush. I've never used blush. I get red very easily, and it's always been really easy for it to like show up um, under my foundation because um, I am genetically predisposed to rosacea because my mom has rosacea. So there's that. So I actually don't own any blush at all because I've never needed it. I think the last time I used blush, I was probably a child when I first started playing with makeup. When I was a child. 
I'm gonna go back into those same make glam light, the same glam light palette, the same color pop palette, and the same Milani palette, and I'm gonna repeat the process of light to dark that I did on my top lid onto my bottom lid. And I'm really gonna try to like smoke it out and all of that because I've been really liking that vibe lately. That really smoky. I can't remember the last time I did a cut crease. It's been so long since I have done a cut crease that I, honest to God, have no idea if I can still do them as well as I used to be able to. I did a double cut crease once and that was a lot of fun. And if you don't know what a double cut crease is, it's where you like cut your crease and then you do it again but you leave a thin little line between the eyeshadow and your crease from the first cut and the eyeshadow on your eyelids. Um, and it's really cool. You can either like leave it blank or you can fill it in with like another color or maybe some glitter. Um, oh, now I want to do that. That might be in a different video. Actually, no, that will be in a different video. Oh, but yeah, back to in Invisaligns. Um, because I think, I, I always get sidetracked in conversations. My brain just goes, like, everywhere. I wish I would have thought to have done this when I first started. I should have started a vlog of, like, my journey with Invisaligns. Is that something that you guys would still be interested in seeing? Like, it's been... I'm on the 18-month plan, and at this point, it's been six or seven months since I started. Um, I didn't originally start out with rubber bands. Um, I do have some photos of what my teeth looked like before... I started Invisalign and then I've been trying to remember now to like once a month take like a selfie which I've never been very comfortable doing um, with of how my teeth are changing like month to month because whenever I smile or I see my teeth when I talk I definitely notice a difference especially with my top teeth they are de absolutely straighter especially these guys my two big teeth but my teeth have been like crooked and the edges were never flat. They were always like craggly. I don't know if that's the right word or bumpy. Um, when they were just, they just grew in like that. And it's been like that ever since, you know, my baby teeth were like falling out and everything. And you know, it's funny. I was homeschooled my whole life. I personally chose never to really be around a lot of people because I didn't feel... I have always wanted to skip, when it comes to any type of relationship, I've always wanted to skip the getting to know you part and just be straight into like friends or whatever part where they actually know me. I've wanted to skip the whole getting to know you part. Um, which is why I never went out and socialized. But I've always, um, I've never really felt insecure about my teeth or my smile until I started going to beauty school and I was forced into those, um, I say, for, I use the term forced very lightly, or I forced myself, I should say, into those, um, where's my, where's my brush? right in front of my face, as usual, into those um, social settings where, you know, you get to see, you know, people's teeth more when they talk or when they smile, and suddenly I noticed I was, like, subconsciously comparing my smile, my teeth with theirs, and suddenly I was a little bit more insecure and as I realized that it it really sucked it really really s sucked um, and I didn't really talk about it with anyone not even my mom and my mom and I are very close but I there was nothing either of us could do about it because being in America, you know, healthcare sucks all the way around, especially dental care. So we were I was never able to get to a dentist because I couldn't afford to get to a dentist. Dentists were too expensive. 
and then the ma when the masks started coming into play with COVID and you know this much of our face is hidden you can't see my mouth and then when we would stop wearing masks when at least in Texas when the mask mandates were first starting to lift um, and we all we stopped wearing our masks as often before you know the, the new variants were starting to come out before like before Delta and them suddenly people could see my mouth people could see my smile again and those insecurities just came rushing back and again it, it really sucked <laughs> and then the so my smile wasn't the main reason I went to a dentist the main reason I went was because my pediatric dentist about cavities I need to get those looked at before they get worse and it gets more expensive to fix them so I finally saved up enough money to go to a dentist and I really like the dentist that I chose I think they do a great job of explaining things to me especially the hygienist that I have I love her she's kind but she doesn't really sugarcoat things either she, she's not mean about it but she's not like well you know what I mean so when she first <laughs> one of the first things that she said when she saw my teeth for the first time was you should probably get Invisalign and it's not just for the cosmetic reasons that she recommended it apparently my the way my bite is um, when I chew the right side of my mold, my right molars, they grind together. And she said that if I didn't get Invisalign, I would end up needing crowns, which is from apparently a lot more expensive and a lot more painful than um, Invisalign or braces. Um, and they said that Invisaligns were better for me. And I was really happy with that because um, I always wanted Invisaligns. I was like, I want my smile to be straight, my teeth to be straight. I don't want to be so self-conscious about my mouth when I smile at people or whatever. And in the moment, like when I'm talking to someone and I'm laughing or I'm just smiling, I'm not thinking about my teeth. But when I'm like, when someone's trying to take a picture of me and I know it's coming, is all you get. I don't, I don't smile smile unless I'm very happy. Um, but I've been trying to fix that, I've been trying to smile more, and honestly, my aligners have made me more self-conscious about my smile, um, because I've got these things in my mouth, the rubber bands have made me more self-conscious about my smile, because I've got these things in my mouth, but I feel like they've also given me an excuse to try to not be as, uh, self-conscious as I am. or to try to work through it. But I'm supposed to be done with them by Christmas of this year, of 2022. And let me tell you, I cannot wait to get these things out of my mouth. Let me tell you how annoying Invisalign are. So with Invisalign, you can't eat with them in, naturally. You have to take them out to eat. Um, and then when you go to put them back in, you have to brush your teeth every single time because, you know, food can get trapped. You don't want food getting trapped inside the aligners with your teeth because that can breed like bacteria and stuff that can damage your teeth. And you can't drink anything with them in except water. Because again, you know, bacteria, buildup, um, staining, that's a thing. It can stain the aligners, which in turn can stain your teeth. And then, they got these things that they like glue onto your teeth. They call them attachments or buttons and it helps the aligners um, hold on to your teeth better in certain spots if with, with certain teeth that need to move more or in a very specific direction. And then, you know, the rubber bands. I also have an overbite so the rubber bands are trying to pull my top teeth back this way and then they glue the, the Invisalign up top have hooks like carved into them so that so where they hook onto the top and on the bottom I've got I've had two hooks glued onto my bottom molars for months before they actually started me on the rubber bands 
and I have to change out my rubber bands every time I have a meal, which is also annoying. And I also don't think they gave me enough rubber bands at my previous appointment to last me until my next appointment, because you also have to go every X, X amount of months um, to get more trays, because they don't give you all your trays at once in case something goes wrong. And you always have to hold on to all of your trays until you're completely done in case your teeth don't move at the right pace and then they have to rescan your teeth. Then you have to wait for more new aligners to come in. The tray before, the one I put in now, I just put these guys in today. I have to, I have to change them like every two weeks. The tray before, no, two trays before, I had to leave my align those aligners in a couple extra days because my teeth hadn't shifted enough for the next tray and I was like, oh, shit, because it's annoying, it's frustrating. And every time, the first week of a new set of trays is the most painful and uncomfortable thing. Jaw pain up here, pain, I don't know, cheekbone pain, I guess, the top part of the jaw hurts. Your teeth hurt because they're physically moving and shifting inside of your mouth to look a certain way, to be a certain way. A Tylenol works great for that though. I didn't finish my bottom lid. I thought I did, but as a matter of fact, I have not finished it. Not to mention, yeah, Invisaligns are cheaper than braces, but they're still freaking expensive. So, um, if you want Invisaligns, and be prepared to pay an arm and a leg for them. Now, all that being said, I know that this is going to be worth it in the end. Logically, I know that. Because he's also, my orthodontist is also going to file down the edges of my teeth so that they're flat, they're not like bumpy and everything. Which, bro, when he, when he said that without me having to mention it, I, I straight up almost cried. That was the moment I realized, oh, maybe I don't like my teeth. Maybe I'm more insecure about my teeth than I thought I was. I was going to do a liquid eyeliner, but I don't think I will. I think I'm just going to stick with my pencil. And I use the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner Pencil in Swerve, and I'm just going to do a line on my upper lash line because it's softer. And I'm putting lashes on today, which I'm going to warn you guys now, I'm not great at. But these guys, the lashes I'm putting on have a clear band, and they're blue lashes. They're not black, so I just want something there. I'm also going to pop this in my waterline. Now I'm going to use the NYX the brow glue from NYX to gel my brows in place. I am absolutely getting this in my bangs. It's funny, I had bangs my whole life until tw about 2019, like my senior year of high school. And then I grew them out and I was so happy to not have bangs again and then I decided to do this pixie cut and I have bangs again <laughs> maybe I'm not gonna do lashes I was gonna let me see them I was gonna do lashes but I want to draw flowers up here and I'm wondering if the lashes are gonna keep from You can't even really see the lashes against this. Nah, you'll be able to see them. A couple years ago, I used to do like, I used to like paint flowers on my eyes, just like donning them on. And I have, had always done it with um, colored eyeliners, specifically from NYX. I used their white liquid liner. And then they had a, from the, Vi I don't know if they still do the Vivid Brights collection or if I got replaced with the Epic Ink um, liners, but I would use the Vivid Brights one in the green and the yellow as well. But I'm going to try something different today and I'm going to use some of the About Face Beauty um, Matte Fluid Eye Paints. This is Halsey's makeup, excuse me, Ooh, this is Halsey's makeup brand. And... 
I finally, they, they restocked the colors and I finally got my hands on the white one. This is the first time I'm going to be using the white one and it's called, I need my glasses because the text on the bottom of these things are so tiny. So the white one is called White Noise. I look like a school teacher. I look like Magana. I might hope they weren't sitting crooked. I'm also going to use this green one from the Day Tripper collection called Everything Now. And then I'm also going to use the yellow one from the Day Tripper collection called Incoming. I also have the blue one from the Day Tripper collection, but I don't remember what that's called. I don't know if they still have anything from the Day Tripper collection. I'm pretty sure all of that was limited edition. Um, so you'd have to go onto their website and check that out yourself. These are pretty expensive. They're like $24 each. But um, if you like to play around with makeup or if you want to try like graphic eyeliners, I would definitely recommend these. Um, they dry down super quick. So once you put them on, blend like hell and hope for the best. Definitely not meant for beginners. So I'm just going to open this guy up. You can also like mix these together like on like the back of your hand or on like a palette or something um, and make different colors. I know the whole point, Halsey said that the whole point of this of their brand was to um, let people have fun and create with it. So that's definitely what I'm trying to do. But I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna pick up with a brush off of the applicator. And I'm just gonna dot on some petals. This might not have been the best choice. I feel like it might be mixing in to the blue eyeshadow a little bit. I might grab that liquid eyeliner because I still have some. I might, I might grab it and go over, over it. I also feel like this was not the best brush. Yeah, I hate that. We're going to roll with it. We're going to roll with it. They're bigger than I wanted, but we're going to roll with it. I should get my hands on some actual like paint brushes from like the craft store. Because I feel like... Yeah, this brush is like spreading open. So I feel like when it comes to stuff like this, makeup brushes like this just, no matter how you dry them, they don't hold that precise like tipped shape. Well, this is going to be just as bad, isn't it? Maybe. It's definitely not the eye paint's fault at all. It's absolutely the brush's fault. And this is the third brush I'm using. I'm gonna use the yellow one to do like that center, the yellow center that flowers usually have. It always ends up looking better once the yellow centers are in. And then of course the green is going to be for the leaves, if I can get it open. Still not completely thrilled with it, but it's better than it was. I'm going to take the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Glitter Liner in, what are you called? Stage Dive. It's very green. And I'm going to put this just a tad on top of each leaf. Not a whole lot, just the tiniest little bit. It's not even really on top so much as like right next to each little leaf. And kind of on top, just to kind of make them pop a little bit, but still keeping that 
the color of that eye paint able to show through because these are two di very different shades of green here. And then I'm going to pick up the About Face um, Fractal Glitter Brow. Um, I, know that these were, I know these were definitely limited edition from the Fractal Glitter Collection. Um, these are like brow gels, but they're glitter. And this is in the shade Envy Baby. It's a greenish one. I thought that might look kind of cool with um, the look and my hair. It does kind of, um, at least this shade does kind of tint my brows a little bit odd. But we're going to use it anyway. I hope the camera catches it as pretty as it is um, in real life. Now I'm going to highlight with the About Face um, Light Lock Powder Highlight in Ice Dusted. It's very much like a blue-green tone, but it's still... kind of nice and bright. I'm going to use that on my inner corners. I'm not like a lot of highlighter, personally, especially on my eyes. I'm also going to put it just under my brow. Probably should have done the brow highlight before I painted the flowers on, but yeah, oh well. Probably also before the brow glitter stuff, but oh well. I'm also going to highlight my face with it, mainly my cheeks. I'm realizing now that um, I chose this Lime Prime Lip Topper to go on top of my black liquid lipstick, but it's a more purple blue and I've got more green and blue going on on my face than I originally intended. So I'm going to see here okay, really, what I can do to make more purple show up. I'm going to go into that Glam Light palette and I'm going to pick up this shade Manifest on my finger and I'm just going to tap it on this over that blue just a little bit. Not too much. That kind of changes it a little bit. Do I think that's enough? No. I'm also going to pick up Immaculate again just the tiniest bit. Just put that on top. Again, using my finger. Better. Better. I'm going to take one of those brushes I used for my bottom lid. I'm going to do the same thing to my bottom. I hope it translates well on camera, but I love how it looks in person. But now I'm going to glue these lashes to my face. I'm going to warn you guys now, I'm not very good at gluing lashes on. But I do like to use the Duo Brush On Glue. I got so much lash glue on my bottom lash. I don't even know how I did that. I think I put way too much on that inner corner. And I definitely glued the inner corner of the right lash um, to my lashes and not my actual lash line. That's that's great. Love that for me. I can't wait to get the I can't wait to get the latex based glue out of my eyes. Out of my eyelashes. Um, but now I'm going to take the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Glitter Liner in Pyro. Pop this on my inner corners. I'm going to use um, the KBD Black Liquid Lipstick. I know this has an actual name. It's called Witches. It's actually pretty cool. Oh, another thing about Invisalign. If the trays don't fit right, like uh, the tray before this one, um, 
was poking out on the bottom of this corner here and every time I would talk it would rub and pinch the inside of my lip and it was giving me canker sores to the point where I had to go back to the dentist and um, be like hey how do I fix this because I can't go two weeks like this because aura gel wasn't helping anymore so um, they ended up having to like snip it snip and sand it down um, a tiny piece of the aligner down so and then this lime crime topper um, let's see what's it called trip it's a purple blue shifty topper I've worn it as just like by itself too I just didn't like how it made my lips feel and made them feel a crackly and dry, but I've never actually used it on top of a lipstick before, so I'm actually... Oh my god. That is definitely more blue than I was expecting. I was expecting more of that purple shift, because like in the bottle it's more of like a purpley shift, and like on my natural lips it's more of a purpley blue shift, but holy shit. I feel like a fairy. I forgot how uncomfortable liquid lipsticks are though. I also forgot how fast they dry down and how quickly you have to work with them. I forgot how they like like to settle into like the, the, the lines of my lips and I've never liked the lines of my lips. Because um, I stopped wearing liquid lips. I stopped wearing lipstick period as often once the mask came in because that was like kind of pointless. Um, oh, I will also say that uh, I have to be careful when I do wear lipsticks because a lot of times I'm going to rub off on my teeth so, or on my aligners and I won't notice until someone points it out. These are a bit more green than I realized they were in comparison to everything else, but you know what? We're going to roll with it. The hair color I actually used today was from Lime Crime. It was their unicorn hair in anime. It's a bit it's a bit lighter and brighter than Arctic Fox's Aquamarine, which is I usually use Arctic Fox. Um, I've been using Arctic Fox for three or four years now. These earrings are from Charming Charlie. Uh, they're one of the local malls actually recently. Um, how to like, I don't know if it's still technically what Charming Charlie used to be, or if it's more like a, a Charming Charlie like outlet type store, like a Nordstrom Rack version of Charming Charlie. But I went and bought quite a few pairs of earrings last year from them. So this is one of them. They were pretty cheap actually too, which is what makes me wonder if it's actually like a Charming Charlie or not. Um, here, here, here's the makeup. What do we think? I know that the reason that my hair looks like this and not like the swatch color of the Lime Crime's uh, hair dye is because I had actually I actually had like purple on underneath this and I haven't bleached my hair in a couple months. Um, I think if I had bleached my hair first and then put this on top of it, it would be a lot brighter, a lot more like the hair swatches that you can usually find or like the color of the hair on the box. I also wanted to show that you can wear makeup with glasses. I do it like every day of my life. I'm stuck with these glasses. I have astigmatism in both eyes. So I'm stuck with these guys permanently. Um, because I have no intention of ever wearing contacts. Um, they freak me out. Oh my god, I have to take these off. I can't. When my lashes hit my glasses, it drives me bash. Um, I don't know how long this video is going to end up being. When I'm filmed, the raw footage length is an hour 48. Holy shit. And here's what the eye makeup actually looks like up close. I can do this cool thing where I can just cut, where I can. I can raise my eyebrow. If you go back and look at my Instagram, actually, um, all those photos of my eyes, um, I raised 
it's all my left eye pretty much, and I like, I raised my, I raised my eyebrow in every single one of them. I think I want to stop doing that though, and just show what it looks like, relaxed. I hope you stick around for the journey to see what I decide to do with this page, what I end up doing with it. Um, I will have my Instagram and my TikTok and my Facebook page uh, linked in the description. I also have a list of all the products I used today on my face as well. Um, let me know what kind of content you guys want to see me. I think I've got quite a few cool stuff planned that I'm excited to film. And it's been a while since I've been excited to film or make any content for um, my brand, essentially. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video.